So today's video, excuse the live shop with the grinding in the background, but uh, what I'm gonna try to capture for you here is the temperature change of refrigerant as it goes through a change of state from a liquid to a vapor as I use the recovery machine, that's the field piece recovery machine, into a tank. Okay, let's look at our tank right now. So our tank, this system is probably not big enough to raise the temperature of this tank. But let's see, our tank, let's get down to the gray. So we're at 60, almost 70 degrees on this tank. So let's remember these pressures and the temperatures, okay? Now let's take the temperature of this area because these bottom five tubes here are almost filled with liquid refrigerant. Everything else above it is vapor. So let's take the temperature of this. So now this is kind of shiny and reflective. So we got 58, 59, 60 degrees right there. This is the liquid line out going to the expansion valve. Here's the receiver dryer right here. This is all vapor up in here at the top uh, three quarters of the condenser and it goes into the receiver, it goes up, it comes down as a, and it separates out. You got all your oil and your liquid right down here. Then there's a little hole through the receiver that goes through transfers to these bottom few tubes. So we got roughly liquid here. Car's been sitting here overnight, so it's been still. Uh, air conditioning hasn't been on, it's cold. So all the liquid has fallen all the way down to the very bottom of the tubes. So let's get on to this, uh, our temperature over here. So there we go. Now let's turn on the recovery. Here's our pressure going into the tank. I turned it on for about 30 seconds and then stopped it really fast. And I determined I wanted, uh, made a quick video for you guys. So here's the uh, low side or here's, here I am follow it I'm only hooked up to the low side let me uh, engage it right now let's see what the pressure is inside so now I'm engaged and the pressure inside the system is 52 degrees since this is R134 we're close to 52 degrees and here's our high side to the tank let's hit the start button start Take a look back here. Let's see if we can watch this uh, change color here. If there's enough liquid in the system, if it's not already partially empty because it's an old system that's never been charged this should and we're, it should drop one of the worst things is I hate aluminum now you could see where it's turning darker blue I'm gonna turn my laser on Now we're in the 40s. Just watch the temperature. The recovery unit is drawing down the system, lowering the pressure. Over here. See now this is the one, this is all liquid here, but look how high the temperature is. You know why? That's shiny aluminum. And you know where it's picking that temperature off of? It's reflecting off of me, my body heat. Because I'm standing right in front of it and I actually have my reflection of heat. You see that uh, red right there? That is not the temperature of the tube. That's me standing in front of here like a, a mirror and my radiant infrared heat is reflecting off my body, my chest, my head, striking that shiny aluminum and, and bouncing right back into the camera sensor and it's picking it up as heat. 
it's not that hot. This is where you get tricked. This is where a lot of guys get tricked using infrared cameras. When things turn, uh, turn change. Now, if I wanted to take a really true temperatures here, I would spray this condenser with flat black paint, like barbecue Weber paint, and then I could get a true reading. But taking, taking temperatures of fins that are made out of aluminum that have a reflection to them, gives you false results, even if you change the emissivity inside your settings in your camera. Okay, so we went from roughly 60 down. We've seen it go as low as 40. And it's rapidly warming up because it's small fins exposed to the air. So the temperature, but you roughly got a kind of a, a chance to see. Now you can see the blue over in that area where there was a lot of liquid down in that corner and it cooled down in that corner. And you see the blue down in that area down there where the liquid was exiting the line. And you can see the cold blue, you can see now my line right here, it's blue because it was removing, there's actually condensate. My line, my line has a little bit of condensate on it from pulling the refrigerant out of the system. But look at the other line, it's red. Now why is it red? Because that was under pressure and that's a hot line there. Let's see what the tank did. So our tank is a uh, 75, 80, somewhere around there, close, close, approaching 80. So you see how the the pressures have raised. You can see the condenser back there where the hot air was blowing out, and you see that was approaching 80. Look at our pressure, 86. That's the pressure inside that tank. Now theoretically, I should be able to read 86, but I don't read 86. Let's see up there at the top, 6970. Let's get the blue. I'm laying that blue stripe. Where's that blue stripe at? Blue stripe somewhere right about there. 75. Let's go to the gray. The gray, 76, 77, 78. You see how the temperatures change as I hit different colors and they reflect differently? And then my tank is full. Actually, there's a good video. Ryan Orb just released, uh, released another excellent video on recovery tanks and overfilling them. Now, a couple days ago, uh, I released a video. I didn't release a video. I showed you a video who to go to to watch one of the most excellent recovery videos I've ever seen. Now, to go with that video, go search out Brian Orb. Those of you who followed me already know who he is because I've linked you to him before. And today, he just released another video on filling recovery tanks. Because us guys in the, auto, in the automotive field, you guys, a lot of you in your small shops, I understand, especially in some countries, you can't afford a $6,000 or a $4,000 big dumb machine. I call them big dumb machines. That's my name for them because they make the technicians dumb because they don't have to think when they hook them up. That's why I call them big dumb machines. And when something goes wrong with that big RR and R machine, recovery, recycle, recharge machine. It's a big effing dumb machine because it makes technicians stupid. Um, but the employers like it because they could pay stupid technicians less. So think about that guys, because you're dumb, you get paid less, how's that? So with these small machines, you guys in small shops, you really, and these don't have safety for automotive. See this right here? That's where the safety float valve goes inside. There'll be a float valve in there with an electrical trigger on it. And when the tank gets full, it shuts your machine off because you'll have a wire from here with the trigger sensor plugged into your machine. You can't overfill it. But in a residential and commercial HVAC, they don't use that uh, because they, you do something every day, it becomes not dangerous because you know what you're doing. Supposedly, there's a lot out of there who don't know what they're doing and they do it anyway. Uh, but if you guys are in automotive, I understand a lot of you guys don't have a lot of money and you can't afford that really big equipment when you when you first start out, especially if you don't do a lot of air conditioning. So this is your best next alternative. But there's a caveat to that. You have to follow the safety rules and instructions. And if you're here in the United States or in some other countries who have 
EPA regulations, environmental protection regulations. We want to take care of our environment. We don't want to dump this refrigerant in the air. That's like dumping engine oil and coolant into your drinking water and down into your well and where the fish live. We don't want to dump this refrigerant into the air. So go to Max, M-A-C-S, another video I, I linked up to. Learn about the safety rules and the procedures for recovering and put that knowledge you learned from Max with the procedures and put it together with a mobile little tiny equipment like this, you can do the same job as the big recovery machines with the little recovery machines minus the recycling. You still won't be able to recycle using this. You'll only be able to recover. And then you can dump the tanks off at your local HVAC warehouse that has a cylinder exchange. They will charge you a nominal fee. $20, $60, $80, I don't know where you're at. In different cities, states, and countries, counties, they charge you differently for a tank of cylinder. So that you have to figure out. But you're charging your customers for that anyway, and you're figuring out what you need to charge. So you get an exchange cylinder for free, you turn in one cylinder, and you get back another cylinder, and you start over again. So tonight, I'll release, for those of you who do not know who Brian Ord is, his new video. I will release that tonight so you guys can see uh, the two videos that I recommend to put together if you're thinking on purchasing one of these pieces of equipment with a tank so you could do something like this. Very low budget. Very simple. Alright guys, see you later.